Welcome to the Getting Started with Freeway 5 tutorials. This is the third of three which will show you how to create a simple site. This tutorial shows you how to make rollover buttons like these and a simple gallery of images. One of the great things about websites is that, unlike a book, the pages can be dynamic and interactive. In this tutorial we'll add functionality and dynamic visual effects to enhance Morris's site. In the last tutorial we created some text hyperlinks. Graphic hyperlinks are created in the same way as text hyperlinks. If we switch to the master page in our tutorial file and select the graphic box with the Morris Cowley text in it, we then go to Edit Hyperlink and choose the welcome page and click OK. This graphic now has a link applied to it and you can see there is a blue globe in the top left hand corner. Draw a graphic item in a blank area of the page and resize it to the values of 100 pixels across and 24 pixels high. In the appearance tab of the inspector apply the same grays we used for the word Morris in the logo. Click on the border button and set the border to be white the size of 1 pixels and make sure the position is inside. Set a value of 12 pixels for the corner so we have a nice sort of lozenge shape. And we want to position this item with the values of 349 and 129 for the Y. Select the rollover graphic we've just created and choose duplicate from the contextual menu. We want two copies and we want 50 pixel horizontal offset and a 50 pixel vertical offset. Click on the blank area of the page once and then the middle item to select it. In the appearance part of the inspector palette make the fill the same colour green as the word Cowley and apply a shadow. We want the shadow's opacity to be 50% and the offset to be 6 pixels. Click once on the bottom item to select it. Set the background colour in the inspector palette to none and switch off the border effects. Click inside it once and type in the word welcome. Select the word welcome and then apply the Georgia font to it. Make the text bold, centre it, give it the height of 14 pixels. We want to move this down vertically as well so it's vertically centred in the item. So we go to Style, Shift, Other and type in minus 40% and this will move the baseline down to a more centralised position. Click and drag a selection marquee around all three items and go to Item and Align. We will want to align horizontally to the left of the object and vertically to the top. We click on OK and all the items will align along the top left hand object in the items we've selected. As we've discussed before it's a good idea to lock items on a master page. So if we drag a selection marquee over our button items we can go to item and lock and that will stop them being moved either on the master page or on the child pages. We now want to apply the rollover to this stack of items. So click on the page to deselect it and open the Actions palette from the Windows menu. Select the top item in the stack just by clicking on it once and then go to Item, Actions, Rollover. The Rollover dialog has a row for each element in the Rollover stack and a column for each state. So in the normal state at the moment all the items will be displayed. If we don't want an item to be displayed we just click on the tick to switch it off. So in the normal state we just want the grey button colour to show. If we click on the mouse over column we can switch off the grey version of the button and keep the green version on. And we can see how our rollover will behave just by clicking on each of the columns and we can see that when the mouse is over it will turn green and when the mouse is not over that button it will go back to a grey button. Click and drag a selection marquee around the stack and choose Item Duplicate. In the Duplicate dialog box we want two copies and we want 122 
pixels for the horizontal offset and zero pixels for the vertical offset and that will give us two more buttons. We click on the topmost item in the center button and type in the word gallery and in the right hand item we select that and change it to contact and now would be a good time to save your document. We need to link these buttons to each of the pages they refer to so if we select the top item in each one in turn and go to edit and hyperlink and choose the page they're going to link to. So the first one will be welcome, the second one will be the gallery and the third one will be contact. And we can test this in the browser by going to preview in browser and choosing Safari. And now if I click on the gallery button or the contact button or the welcome button will be taken to each of the pages in the site and when we mouse over these graphics they will change colour and get a drop shadow. Let's set up a gallery page for Morris. He wants a large picture to appear when people click on the smaller thumbnails on the page and we'll be using the target image action and the rollover action to achieve this. Go to the gallery page and draw a selection marquee over all the thumbnails. Go to item and duplicate and we want one copy of each item with no offsets either horizontally or vertically and click OK. When the items have been duplicated select each one in turn and apply a shadow. And the shadow should have 50% opacity and an offset of 6 pixels. Do this for each of the items you've just duplicated. Now select the large image of the beach huts and choose item duplicate. Again we just want one copy and we want a horizontal offset of zero and a vertical offset of zero. Go to file, import and import the weathered seawall.jpg image. And then go to graphic scale and trim in the contextual menu. We need to repeat this process for all the other images we've got for thumbnails. Select an image in the stack and go to Item, Actions, Target Image. If the action palette isn't open already, open it now. Down the left hand side you'll see a list of all the images in our stack and we want to switch them off for the normal appearance and then switch them on sequentially for each of the images in the target. Click on the parameters tab and set the restore pop up to no. Now select the first thumbnail and choose Item, Actions, Rollover. Give the top item a check mark in the normal column and the bottom one a check mark in the mouse over one. And in parameters, click on the restore pop up and choose sticky and in the mouse over number select one. Repeat this process for the eight remaining thumbnails to make them rollovers. The only difference is to set the mouse over number to the number of the appropriate large image. So far we've looked at item actions which are applied by selecting the item and choosing the action from the actions menu. However there are other kinds of actions as well. So let's create a standalone action which displays the current data on the web page. Click on the master one page, go to insert action item and we want the current date action. In the general tab of the inspector palette 
position and size of the action using 10 pixels for the X, 682 pixels for the Y coordinates, 327 for the width and 12 for the height. Open the actions palette so we can see the current date dialog. Choose yes from the pop-up menu for the day if it's not already selected. If we look at the current date action in Freeway it doesn't look like much, it's just a blue box. But if we publish the site and view the page in the browser we'll see that the correct date is displayed. And we can also look at the gallery page while we're here just to make sure that our thumbnails work correctly. If I roll over each of these thumbnails in turn the large image is displayed and this was all set up earlier on using the target image action and the rollover action. This concludes the Freeway 5 tutorials. Hopefully you've been able to follow all the instructions and you're now inspired to design a website yourself.